Good morning. It is like the perfect day for video. Soft light everywhere. So I'm done with work for the day, but unfortunately I'm not completely done for the day because I still got to go pick up some screws tonight because I'm almost out of several of the sizes that I absolutely have to have for hanging cabinets. But what I actually want to talk to you about today is cutscenes and those YouTube cutscenes that bring us from one location to the other. Okay, I was not expecting this. just a few hours ago this was all white that's North Carolina weather for you anyone who watches this channel knows that about a week ago I was going to change my oil but then it started raining and I was unable to do so so I'm gonna go ahead and change the oil today So first of all, let's define what a cutscene actually is. Now of course, cutscenes take time. And so whenever you're doing a vlog or any type of video that has cutscenes, keep in mind that it's gonna take you longer to do whatever you're doing, like changing the oil or whatever video you're doing, keep in mind that it's gonna add to how much time it's going to take to make that video, especially when you're walking around. <laughs> but the purpose of cutscenes is that they convey story and they convey movement so much better and you can have more than just a static shot of you talking to the camera or sitting in a studio. You can actually have movement now, I'm um, more of just practically talking about like what, how to do cutscenes and like the different methodology of why I do different cutscenes, not necessarily the reason behind cutscenes in general, but how to actually do the cutscenes to make them look fluid and smooth. Now, I think we need a 13 millimeter for this bolt. When you're changing oil, you want to stay out of the path of the oil hitting you and have something to catch it because you can't just let oil fall on the ground as everyone knows. Now, when determining like how you want to do a cutscene, if you're doing a shot where you're like walking by the camera, you don't want to have it where you like go to the other side of your subject. You only want to have about 90 degrees of angle. You do not want to go from like your right side you pass on and then the camera's on your left side when you go into the next shot. Now for example, while I go to get this bucket, would have felt really disconnected whereas this would have felt very natural because that's basically how people would actually see you if they were actually watching you and if someone else was filming you, how they would probably be filming you. For those who don't know, that is what a filter looks like for a car engine. You know, I keep like literally forgetting what the topic of this video is. That is the one annoying thing about actually doing videos while working on something else is I don't feel like I can be as concise 
as I could if I like scripted something out. And like today has just been difficult to try and figure out how I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say. Now I will say, when you're doing an oil filter, you don't wanna like cinch down the uh, filter super tight. You wanna get it as snug as you can just to your hand, but that also requires you getting the grease off your hand so that you can actually grip it tight. Now if you never have learned to change your oil, it's definitely something that I would say is a great skill to have. So I was planning on doing more tips and going out to Bargar and finishing this video, skating around, but after I finished changing my oil, I realized my AC compressor clutch was having a problem, so now it's dark out, and I decided to go ahead and finish the video here. So we already talked about the angle and the fact that you don't want to do more than about 90 degrees because that's how people are seeing you when you're passing by. We want them to feel connected to us and feel like they're basically sitting down or walking around with us while we're vlogging. Now another thing that helps us to do that is if you look at my cutscenes when I'm passing by, one thing that I do not do is I do not get all the way out of one frame before I switch frames. And that is actually very important because when you go out and then you come in the other side, it kind of feels disconnected because people were expecting to almost have their head turn with you as you walk by. And that's basically what we're trying to get the feeling of. I'll go to the end of my clip and then back a frame or two. And then I will cut there and then start my next clip a frame or two as I'm coming into the shot. And that looks very seamless when you put it together, like someone's literally just following you as you walk by. Keep in mind, whenever you're setting up a shot, what would someone's perspective be? You might, instead of doing an angle shot and then another angle shot, maybe you just do a straight shot through something to where someone's walking by that, and that could look really good. It's almost as if someone's looking out a window as you're walking by. And it's things like that that we can use to make it feel like the person's there with us, like they're looking out the window or they're walking around with us. And our intention with making cutscenes is to make it feel seamless. That's why we don't want to have the same exact one every time, because then people start noticing. But your goal is to not have people notice and sort of think of the video as if it's just one seamless shot. And that is what I always strive to do. I hardly ever do it. But when you keep in mind what would other people see if they were out here, and then what are some of the angles that I would see, like the shot of the feet? Everyone looks down at their feet for a split second to make sure they're not walking into something. It's just human nature. And when you can replicate that in a video, it looks really smooth. You could put your camera on the other side of the street and either walk or ride past it. It's another perspective that people might have of you while you're vlogging. And I just want to stress to you that when you're doing cutscenes, this is not a be all end all guide because I'm not very good at those. I don't use huge, vast quantities of different things when I'm making these videos. Sometimes I literally cannot think of other things, so I just do a smash cut between one location and another. But when you keep in mind, what would someone potentially see? So I'm gonna leave it at that. If you have any questions or any tips for cutscenes, leave it down in the comment section. If you like this video or found it helpful, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and I'll see you all in the next video.